Hello everyone and welcome. Beside me is the 2021 Toyota RAV4 Prime and it's simply a fantastic vehicle. 42 miles of electric range, a 2.5 liter engine for a total combined driving range of nearly 600 miles, 302 combined horsepower, it's genuinely quick with a 0 to 60 in under 6 seconds, yes in a 4300 pound SUV, super practical, 2500 pound towing capacity, plenty of cargo space, 8.3 inches of ground clearance, and a clever all-wheel drive system with electric motors for both the front and rear axle which are independently controlled which also allows for all-wheel drive in EV only mode. And as if it couldn't get any better, yes, would you look at that, that is the rare, the elusive, spare tire in the back, something many modern cars seem to think we no longer need. This RAV4 basically takes two of my favorite vehicles, the Tesla Model 3 and the Subaru Crosstrek, and combines them into one literally do-everything package. So much so, I'm genuinely tempted to trade in both of those cars and find one of these. If you've heard about this thing, you probably haven't heard many complaints, except that Toyota hasn't been making very many, thus they're quite difficult to get your hands on. So if you go on the internet, there's a hundred different reviews telling you in a hundred different ways that that is the only car you'll ever need. So if your question is, hey, what car do I need? Well, that question's already been answered. So what the heck am I supposed to do with this? Obviously, I had to create my own useless question that no one was wondering. Could a RAV4 Prime actually be better for the environment than a Tesla? Because, hear me out, if something this good exists, something with so few compromises, and it's just as green as going electric, well, that would be a pretty great thing. So let's break down the life cycle emissions of a vehicle like this versus a Tesla Model Y. Yes, I'm aware that this is a three. So there are two main parts to the emissions equation. First, of course, you have emissions associated with actually creating the vehicle. And it is well understood that electric cars generally have higher emissions associated with production as a result of the batteries. The second part of the equation is, of course, the emissions associated with actually driving the vehicle. This is where electric cars have a big advantage because they're super efficient, so they tend to have low emissions per mile driven. Yes, even when you take into consideration where that electricity comes from. For this video, we'll be using the average US energy production mix, so about 20% coal, 40% natural gas, 20% nuclear, and 20% renewable, and so that gives us about 60% of our energy production coming from fossil fuels. So what are our emissions for creating the car? What are our emissions for using the car? And then of course eventually the car is going to stop working. For this video, we're simply going to ignore the end of life scrapping and recycling for two reasons. First, it's a very small portion of the overall emissions. And second, you can actually decrease lifetime emissions through recycling programs that offset the needs for extracting and refining of new materials. It's not exactly cost effective to do so yet, but studies have shown it's advantageous from an emissions standpoint. Okay, let's not get distracted and start off with production. So battery capacity is often measured in kilowatt hours. The Toyota RAV4 Prime has an 18.1 kilowatt hour battery pack and the Tesla Model Y has about a 75 kilowatt hour battery pack. So now the question is, so that we can compare these batteries directly, is what are the emissions per kilowatt hour of a lithium ion battery? And that's a very challenging question to answer. I read study after study after study, uh, there's a wide range out there, and many of the studies were actually pretty frank about it, and they're like, hey, this is a pretty tough thing to figure out. So unless a manufacturer is actually accurately measuring this and providing that information, it's very difficult to know. Studies estimate it's about 30 kilograms of CO2 per kilowatt hour to as high as 300 kilograms per kilowatt hour. And since that's a range that's off by about a factor of 10, that doesn't exactly inspire confidence. But if you start to read through the literature far too much, you kind of start to hone in on a number of about 100 to 150 kilograms per kilowatt hour. This is a fair bit higher than what Tesla claims about their vehicles, but we'll get into that situation later. So we've got two vehicles and we've got two big lithium ion batteries. The Tesla's battery is about four times the size as the Toyota's, so it's fair to assume that the production emissions for the Tesla are greater than the Toyota. If we assume 150 kilograms of CO2 per kilowatt hour, probably a high estimate, we've got 11 metric tons of CO2 for the Tesla and 2.7 tons for the Toyota. 
Now, of course, we have to think about the rest of the vehicle as well. The Tesla has a large electric motor up front as well as a large electric motor in the back. The Toyota has a 2.5 liter engine up front plus a large electric motor and then a small electric motor in the back. The Model Y weighs a bit more, 4,475 pounds versus 4,300 pounds. So we're simply going to say that excluding the battery packs, both of these vehicles require a similar amount of resources and thus the same emissions for production. Okay, now we're back into guesstimate land where every paper gives this a different number. And that makes sense, right? Cars are made of different materials, different amounts of those materials, different manufacturing techniques, and so on. So coming up with a blanket average is a bit silly, no? Great, so we'll say 10 metric tons of CO2 for production. A lot of literature seems to say around five to 10 tons, though of course there are examples that are higher, but we'll stick with 10 tons. If you're getting nervous because this is sounding very ambiguous, don't worry, as the video progresses, we will come to conclusions that are a bit less dependent on eh, 10 tons. So we have our vehicle emission production numbers. So for the Toyota, 10 tons for the vehicle production plus 2.7 tons for the battery. So 12.7 tons overall for the vehicle. And then for the Tesla, 10 for production, 11 for the battery, 21 tons total emissions for the vehicle production. Step one is complete. Give yourself a pat on the back. Now we move on to emissions for driving each of these vehicles. And the good news is the data are much more clear. There's far less guesswork and this makes up the bulk of our overall emissions so we can start to feel fairly confident in the numbers. So for gasoline energy, we're talking gallons of gasoline. Now, what the heck is a gallon? Well, this is a gallon. It's kind of like a liter, except 3.8 times bigger because this is America and that's how we like things here. So how much CO2 is produced by burning a gallon of gasoline? Well, it's a fairly straightforward chemistry problem. So there's a fairly straightforward answer. Though, of course, we also have to include the emissions required to produce that gallon of gasoline, commonly referred to as well to wheel. According to the US Department of Energy, that number is about 10.7 kilograms of CO2 emitted by burning one gallon of gasoline. Now, some of you are now distracted because you know that in the United States, gasoline has about a 10% ethanol blend in it at most gas stations. And so this will actually slightly improve emissions. It will also slightly increase fuel consumption. For the purposes of this video, we're going to ignore it to keep things simple. So when I say a gallon of gas, I mean a gallon of gas. Okay, so we know the emissions for burning a gallon of gasoline, but what are the emissions for electric energy? Electric energy is often measured in kilowatt hours, a metric unit that even us Americans can understand because it's how our electrical bills are calculated. So what we want to know is how many kilograms of CO2 emissions do we have for using one kilowatt hour of energy? Thankfully, the US Energy Information Administration provides us with how much electricity we produce in the United States and what the emissions are as a result of that production. If you divide the total emissions from energy production, 1.72 trillion kilograms, by the total energy produced, 4.13 trillion kilowatt hours, you get about 0.42 kilograms of CO2 emissions per kilowatt hour produced. Now that energy hasn't yet reached this vehicle's battery pack. So we have to take into consideration transmission losses as well as charging efficiency losses. So once that energy gets stored into this battery per kilowatt hour, it's about 0.53 kilograms of CO2 emissions. If you're still listening, bless you. And I promise the conclusions will be worth it. So check this out. Now that we have all of our variables defined and calculated, we can finally start to answer our question, is the Toyota RAV4 Prime cleaner than a Tesla Model Y based on emissions? So we're going to say each car travels 13,500 miles a year, which is the national average for the United States. And we're going to say we're going to own the vehicle for 10 years. I'm not saying the vehicle is toast, done so at 10 years, just saying that's how long we're going to use it. And if you don't believe me that these things can last 10 years, take for example Toyota's battery warranty, which for this vehicle is 10 years or 150,000 miles. Look, Toyota doesn't want to pay to replace your battery pack at nine and a half years. So in order to do so, they have to make sure that the vast majority of their battery packs last longer than 10 years so they don't take a big financial hit. The same logic goes for the Tesla. It's not unreasonable to assume that these cars are likely designed to last around 200,000 miles. 
So we're going 13,500 miles per year and we're driving for 10 years. For the Tesla, it's a really easy calculation because all of the miles are electric. For the RAV4, some of the miles are electric and some of them are gas powered. So let's say we have a 30 mile work commute we take each day. If the commute is longer, the gas engine kicks on. 30 miles, five days a week, 50 weeks a year, that's 7,500 miles a year or about 55% of the total yearly mileage. This will be all electric, assuming you charge up each night. The other 6,000 miles, or 45%, will assume is gas powered. And if you're concerned that I've made up this 55% electric number, know that based on SAE J2841, you can estimate a 33 mile plug-in hybrid will have 55% of its miles driven on electricity. So what are the results? Pretty crazy, right? Tesla's estimate is about 40.4 metric tons of CO2 emissions, while the Toyota is about 43.9 metric tons. Not a huge difference, especially when you take into consideration that the average 25 mile per gallon combustion vehicle would be sitting at about 67.7 metric tons. So the good news is here, compared to a combustion vehicle, the Toyota is definitely in a good spot emissions wise. You can also compare what the emissions of the Toyota would be if it were to operate only as electric or only as a combustion vehicle. The interesting thing here is, if you don't drive all that much, the Toyota would actually be the greener option than the Tesla because it starts with a much smaller battery pack. Now in 2019, Tesla released a fairly detailed impact report. According to this document, if I've done my calculations correctly, Tesla shows their total production emissions for the Model 3 battery is about 5,000 kilograms or about 70 kilograms per kilowatt hour. Less than half the initial estimate we used in this video. So how do they get their number so low? Well, two main factors. First of all, Tesla is producing batteries at a massive scale. The bigger the scale, the less emissions you have per battery created. Second of all, Tesla is actually putting in a pretty big focus towards getting renewable energy sources to use for vehicle production and battery production. This also lowers emissions. So if we go back to our chart and update it based on Tesla's impact report, we have new numbers. Now the RAV4 Prime has 8 metric tons more lifetime emissions versus the Model Y, though compared to internal combustion engines, both are quite good. And in fact, the Tesla has less than half the emissions after just 10 years versus the average combustion car. From a break-even standpoint, the Tesla will have lower overall emissions versus the RAV4 after 45,000 miles, or about 3.3 years, and will have lower overall emissions versus the average combustion car after just 18,000 miles, or 1.4 years. It's also important to mention that all of these calculations are assuming we're using today's grid, and that as the electrical grid gets cleaner and cleaner, the emissions of electric cars continue to improve, whereas combustion cars will not. So these numbers are likely to look even better for electric cars as time goes on. Still, I think this leaves us with a pretty fascinating conclusion that while the Tesla likely does have better life cycle emissions, the Toyota actually comes pretty close, all while offering you the flexibility of a 2.5 liter engine, tons of cargo space, more ground clearance, the true ability to tow, albeit only 2,500 pounds, a spare tire, yes, I'm still excited about that spare tire, all in a normal looking SUV that's not wildly streamlined. Look, I think low drag coefficients are rad, but not everyone thinks the way that I do. To me, this seems like a really, really smart vehicle that also happens to make a pretty big impact on emissions with very few real world sacrifices. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.